Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to do some no line watercolor flowers today. This is a Mother's Day stamp set, but you can use the flowers themselves any time of year as well if you like doing flowers. I've stamped my flowers onto some Arches watercolor paper, the cold pressed kind, in a couple of pigment inks. So the, the flowers themselves are in a yellow called Mimosa from Avriel. The stamp set, by the way, is from Avriel. And I did the words in, I believe it was, I don't remember the name, but it's going to be in the doodly too because I did write it down. And so that's one of their red inks. And when you do no line watercolor, sometimes it can really teach you about how to paint a flower. So these little pretty roses are going to be teaching us some lessons about flowers. You can go from the outside of the flower and put the dark color on the outside. You can do it from the inside. You can play around with bouncing back and forth between both. And I'm using Permanent Yellow Deep. It's one of the colors from my dot card collection, my favorite colors. And I was gonna add a little bit of transparent uh, pure orange in here and it was just like too much. So I went back to just going to the Permanent Yellow Deep went a little bit too far with that and I liked it just with these, this really soft beautiful creamy yellow and I, I like this because it's it's more of a Y17 yellow for those of you who like my Copic marker stuff that's my favorite color and uh, when my mom gets this and hopefully she's not watching it mom if you're watching this turn it off you can watch it after Mother's Day <laughs> and uh, just putting some more color in those little buds I'm going to use two greens here, a sap green, which is absolutely my favorite of all the greens. It's a very natural color, but it's got some vibrance to it as well. It's not kind of a, a dead color, but it's also not electric. I don't like those, you know, really screaming bright ones, except for other uses when I'm doing plants. I like the sap green and, and some, you know, some other, the, the more rich earthy types of greens. So I'm using also a silver brand brush from the Black Velvet line. I believe this is the number eight, I think. Yes. And I've been using larger brushes. You may have noticed I'm just slowly getting myself there. And this was the second time I painted it because the first time I realized it was too much to try to paint those stems when this was wet. So if you want to add stems, uh, wait till the rest of it is dry because I mine turned into a giant blob when I did that. And I eventually ended up not doing the stems at all. But the first time I tried it, I totally wrecked it by trying to put little stems in there. And even switching to a smaller brush wouldn't have helped because it was just the fact that everything was all wet. And generally trying to bounce around your image and paint things that aren't touching each other can be really helpful. So I'm just going to fill in a couple of these in the sap green before I switch to another green because I don't want them all to be identical green. And you can also mix greens. You can mix some of your sap green with some yellow or with a little bit of red with another color to try to change them up. You can put some blue in it, that sort of thing. And then green appetite is one of my other favorites. And the reason is because green appetite has some granulation in it. I love granulation. That's where the color kind of breaks down into a texture. Really, really like that a lot. But one of the things I really it learned from this that I enjoyed in painting this whole cluster of flowers and greens, look at the difference in the sizes of the flowers, the sizes and shapes and variety in the leaves. So if you're painting flowers, make sure you get some variety in there because look at how intricate some of the areas are, these tiny little leaves I'm painting. Other areas, nice big flowing loose leaves. So every time you're working on a stamp set, think about that if you're going to carry some of those ideas into other artwork that you do. If you have a sketchbook that you work in or trying to do finished paintings, see what you can learn from what you're creating here. And what I really liked was the variety of shapes and sizes in the stamp set from Avriel. Very nicely done. Add a little bit of stems here on my buds and those tolerated much better doing, <laughs> doing my little stems. I did not wreck it. And I went back to my sap green for one more large leaf. And the uh, 
the palette that I'm using. There is a palette uh, tutorial here on my YouTube channel. I can link you that to that either at the end or in the doobly-doo. And if I forget, leave me a comment. <laughs> but I have a video showing you how I put my palette together. And after all this was dry, I went back in and started adding another layer of color on top of what I already had here. It's just to give it a little bit of richer color because I wanted it to just be a little stronger. It was feeling very soft and not necessarily weak, but I just wanted more punch to it. So this is just by adding another layer of the same colors right on top. And fortunately that pearl orange did go away a bit because it was, it was a little much in what I was trying to add to it. If you want more of a peach color, you can mix uh, some pearl with it or some other red with it, but it's helpful to do that and mix up enough of that color that you get through your whole flowers. And I tend to use the straight up color that are in my pans in my palette rather than trying to mix them because I don't usually have enough sense to mix enough of the color at one time to get the whole painting done. And then I'm kind of stuck in the middle without enough paint. So that's kind of a problem. So here's where I decided it was okay to add a little more of the transparent pure orange just to a few select areas. Now that I have my flower more defined and look at how much richness that's adding by just putting a little tiny bit of it. And it's not much, it's pretty watered down pigment, but it can really make a difference. And now my greens were looking soft by comparison. So it was time to add a little detail to them. And even though it's not drawn in the stamp, I'm adding kind of half of each leaf in shadow. You can add all different kinds of things to them. You can add veins and everything if you want to get really fussy, but sometimes just uh, a half a leaf is enough to make it feel different and, and feel like there's a little more fussiness going on. In this one, I tried to add some veins and that got a little bit to be of a, a bit of a pain. <laughs> So one half of the leaf was veins and the other half was just gonna be a solid darker color using the green appetite on top of the sap green. And you'll notice there's not a whole lot of that yellow stamped ink showing. So when you're talking about no line watercolor, pick a color that you're going to be able to cover with whatever you're coloring. So if you're coloring in, in blues, then stamp it in a very light blue, the palest blue that you can so that that can be painted right over top of and sort of disappear. That little flower I wanted to be white. So in order to make it look white, I had to put color around it. So I took a very watered down sap green, very, very light, and just added a little haze of it right around all of the flowers. And when you're trying to blend that out into a white, just wash your brush and use just a little bit of water and pull that color out just with the water or you can dab it off with a paper towel, that different kinds of things. And then I just needed to add a little bit more detail in the centers of my flowers. And that white flower didn't come out completely looking like it was popping enough, so I added just a little extra sap green underneath of it. The finished card, I die cut that center panel and I went, wait a minute, I have this beautiful watercolor paper panel on the outside and both edges are stitched from this die. So I just threw some matching colors, just slathered them on that frame and nested them back together for my finished card. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel, watch some more videos here, and I will uh, link you also to a watercolor class in case you're interested in that. And I will see you guys later. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.